Shalom everyone. It is Rosh Kodesh and I am very excited today to share a little bit about the month of Cheshvan, this new month that we are about to embark on. And let's begin with Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. It says, And Elohim said, Let lights come to be in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and appointed times and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the expanse of the heavens to give lights on the earth. And it came to be so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And Elohim said in the, set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And I think it's important here to know that God, that the first reason God said he created the moon, the sun, the stars was for signs. And what signs are there that the sun and the moon can give us other than eclipses? And that's why the solar and lunar eclipses are so tied to God's calendar. And when God said he gave them to us for appointed times, now in some biblical texts, some versions, it says seasons. And although it has little to do with seasons, with spring, winter, summer, or fall, because the Hebrew word that appears here in the original text of the Torah is the word Moadim. And Moadim means for divine appointments or appointed times that God has ordained according to his calendar. And well, the new moon, which is the start of every biblical month, is the most pivotal day on the biblical calendar. Because without knowing that when the head of the month or when the first day of the month starts, we would never know when any of the biblical holidays or festivals would be kept on. Okay, now let's head to Psalms chapter 104, verse 19 and 21. Here's what it says. He made... God made the moon for appointed times for the Moadim, and the sun knows it's going down. All right, now we know in the Bible, in Bereshit or in Genesis, in the beginning of the Bible, it begins with the tree of life. And we, that's in Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Well, guess what? At the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 1 and 2, we find the tree of life again. Let's read it. It's on Revelations, chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. It says, And he showed me a river of water, of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of Elohim and of the land. In the middle of this tree, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits each tree yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations you see we see the tree of life is connected with Rosh Chodesh the new moon where every month this tree or these trees will yield a fruit and when it says every month it is not referring to January February month or April it is referring to the biblical months. And now, what about during the millennial reign? When Yeshua HaMashiach rules and reigns for 1,000 years, will we still be keeping Rosh Chodesh, the new moon, the head of the month? Well, look at what it says in Ezekiel chapter 46, verse 1 to 3. It says, Thus said the Master Yahweh, the gate of the inner court facing east is shut the six days of work, but on the Shabbat it is open, and on the day of the new moon it is open. And so, you see, even in the millennial reign, we're still going to keep the Shabbat as well as the new moon. Now, what about after those thousand years? In the Alam Olam Haba, in the new heavens and in the new earth. Well, are we still going to be keeping Rosh Chodesh? Well, let's look at Isaiah chapter 66. Verse 
verse 22 and 23. It says, For as the new heavens and the new earth I will make stand before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name shall stand, and it shall be that from new moon to new moon, in other words, from Rosh Chodesh to Rosh Chodesh, and from Shabbat to Shabbat, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares Yahweh. You see? So, wow. so even in eternity, we will still sanctify the appointed times of the new moon and the days of Shabbat. Now, let's look at something interesting at oh, uh, Psalms chapter 81. Verse 3 and 4. Here's what it says. It says, Blow a shofar in the new moon, in the covering for the day of our festival. This is Allah for Israel and the right ruling of the Elohim of Jacob. Now, let's hear to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 25 and 26. We find something very interesting. It says, Thus said Yahweh, If my covenant is not with day and night, if I have not appointed the laws of the heavens and the earth, then I would also reject the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I should not take of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I shall turn back their captivity and have compassion on them. In other words, that isn't happening. The children of Israel will always be God's people. So we see that God's calendar is the firmament. His calendar is the sun, the moon, the stars, the cosmos. And as long as they are there, he will keep his covenant with us. So long as we don't break our covenant with him, right? Okay, now that's a little bit about what is Rosh Chodesh in general. Now I want to share a little bit about this month, Keshvan, and its meaning. Now, every tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel, each was given a certain month that belonged to them. And the eighth month of Keshvan belongs to the tribe of Menashe. And very interesting because here in my Bible, on my scripture, and it's the scriptures, and it shows me here the camp of Israel. And you can find it in the book of Numbers chapter 1 and 2. And this is how Israel was... Um, Israel's camp was ordered throughout their 40 years in the desert, right? So we have here, starting with the tribe of Judah, or Yehuda, and that's, he belongs to the month of Abib, or Nisan. And so we count eight months to come to Heshvan, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we're in the tribe of Menashe. And so, and apart from that, it is also shown in the Sefer Yesira. Now, we know that Cain and Abel did not get along. We know that Jacob and Esau did not get along. But we do know that Ephraim and Manasseh were the first two brothers in the Bible to get along. And Torah commentators say that Manasseh excelled in the things of the world, working side by side with his father Joseph, in Pharaoh's court, and Ephraim, he excelled in spiritual matters. And Menashe, being the older brother, helped Joseph in the administration in the affairs of Egypt. While Ephraim, he would spend his time studying, studying Torah and spiritual matters. Much like if you remember in the blessings of the brothers of Zebulun and Sahar, one would excel in worldly matters, and the other would excel in spiritual matters. They would then team up and exchange knowledge with one another. Now, to talk more about Menashe, remember 
when Joseph presents his two children, Ephraim and Manasseh, before his father Jacob to be blessed, remember? And the question there is, why did Jacob cross his hands rather than just have them move, no? And look, here we find it in Numbers chapter 48. And I mean, in the book of Genesis or Bereshit chapter 48, verse 19, that, that um, Jacob crossed his hands to bless the children of Joseph. But that Joseph looks, he sees, and he says, No, father, your hand, you need to put your right hand over here, over Menashe. He's at your right hand. He is the whole older one. Right? And here I'm going to read it. And he said, But his father refused and said, I know my son, I know. He also will become a people, referring to Menashe. He will also become great. But his younger brother Ephraim, he will become greater than he. And his seed will be the fulfillment of the nations. Then he blessed them and that day saying, I sh In you shall Israel bless by saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Menashe. And that we do at the end of every Shabbat. We bless our children, the boys, like Ephraim and Menashe. And of course, the, our daughters, our girls, like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leo. Now, the sages add on to this that Jacob did realize Menashe truly was the firstborn. So he got to stay at the right hand. They didn't move. But also Menashe was to receive primarily earthly blessings and still have some spiritual insights. Whereas Ephraim was to receive mostly spiritual blessings with some earthly insights. Now, remember after the 40 years, in the desert, the children of Israel are about to enter the promised land. And Moshe distributes the land to each tribe. Well, remember that Reuben and God did not want to enter the promised land because they saw that the plains on the other side of the promised land, on the east of the Jordan River, the land was good for their sheep and their cattle. And Moses initially was angered, but then he accepts the request after Reuben and God say that they will first be alongside their brothers in war to conquer the land. And then they will return and settle in the land that they requested. And what does Moses then do? He accepts, okay. But he orders half the tribe of Menashe to join Reuben and God on the other side of the promised land. And that half tribe of Menashe was not wanting to go there. They were ordered to go there. And you can find that in Numbers chapter 32, verse 39. And the question is, why did Moshe put half the tribe of Menashe over there? Well, Moses wanted both leadership and Torah study to be available to them throughout through the tribe of Menashe. Reuben and God are there and they may know a little bit about cattle and sheep, okay? But they don't know a, lot, a whole lot about governing things. So Menashe, who excelled in governmental structures, was to go over there and help. But that they had also some spiritual insights. As a matter of fact, look at what Menashe's descendants came to be. If we look at Judges chapter 5, verse 14, and it says... First it says, Aro Ephraim was there a rule of them against Amalek, after thee Benjamin among the people. Out of Machir, Machir is descendants of Menashe, son of Menashe, came down governors. And so as we see, out of Machir, who was from Menashe, came down governors. And this word governor implies leaders, rulers, legislators. In other words, from the tribe of Menashe, came legislators knowing how to interpret the Torah law. Now Menashe mostly looked like he was outwardly smart from an administrative point of view from the outside, but you couldn't really see the inside of all his Torah spiritual insights. Well, it just so happens to be that if you take Menashe's name in Hebrew, you switch some letters around 
and you get the word neshama and neshama means soul or spirit here i have it um here on the top if you can see and i have their menashe's name and so if you switch some letters around keeping the same letters not adding letters nor taking out letters but just switching some letters around and we get the word neshama so we can say that hidden hidden within menashe is a very spiritual soul now that's a little bit about menashe now concerning the month of Cheshvan, there are no festivals or more or moadim in this month other than the days of Shabbat. However, many important things did happen in this month. On the 11th day of this month was the very day when Methuselah died. Remember, remember Methuselah? He was the son of Enoch who walked with God. And the book of Yeshar tells us that Methuselah and Noah both preached right side by side together, preached repentance to the world together for 120 years and Methuselah dies one week before the flood and also another thing is that Rachel also died on the 11th of Keshvan which is also the day when Benjamin was born and on the 15th of Keshvan was the very day Jeroboam rebelled and built two pagan altars and you can find that in the first of Kings chapter 12, verse 32. Now, on the 17th of Heshvan is when the flood began. And it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. And Noah left the ark a year later on the 27th of Heshvan. Now, keep that in mind. And another thing is in the first of Kings chapter 6 verse 38 we see that Solomon's temple was completed in the month of Keshvan and it says this in the 11th year in the 8th month the temple was finished in all its details according to its specifications he had spent seven years building it and on the 8th month on the month of Keshvan King Solomon's temple was completed very interesting now to finish off um Cheshvan is when the flood took place when it began and when it ended and we see that in genesis chapter 6 verse 8 right we find something very um um interesting about noah and it says this is what it says but noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh and it's very interesting because when you take Noah's name and you flip it you get the word grace which in Hebrew is chen and here I have it if you can see here I have Noah's name is with the letter nun and the letter chet and if we switch the letters around, we just flip in, we get chen, which in Hebrew means grace. And well, and so even in the times of judgments, we can say that there is always grace. And well, guess what? In the word Cheshvan, the name of this month, the eighth month, is the first, the first letter is Chet, and the last letter is Nun. So grace we have here het and noon and here's how you spell cheshvan and it starts with the letter het shin vav and the uh, noon sofi final now another very interesting thing that we have here is concerning the word grace now as we see i have here you probably already saw that this is how you, this is the numerical value that the word Noah gives us, right? So if we uh, noon has the numerical value of fifty and Chet eight, so 
8 plus 50, we get 58. And of course, that's the same numerical value as grace. Now, here it says, I have here Yeshua. And Yeshua, in its numerical value, um, say this is a way, this is one type of study of, of Hematria. There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Beth. And so if we give each letter its numerical value according to its order from 1 through 22, we get these numbers. So the U10, He5, Vav6, Shin21, Ayin16. We sum it up and it also gives us the letter, I mean the number 58. So here we see that Yeshua and the word Chen, grace, have the same numerical value of 58. So what then can we say about Genesis 6, 8, where it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. Now one could probably, instead of grace, have their Yeshua. But Noah found Yeshua in the eyes of the Lord. And to me, that fills me, no? To find Yeshua in every part of the Torah, in every parasha, in every portion. And to me, that gives me life. And so, these are just a few things that I have here to share with you all about the new moon that we are about to embark on, Rosh Chodesh, Cheshvan, and may everyone have a blessed